This is it. The ultimate boss fight. The highest level assassination with endgame rewards. Truly, this will be a legendary and I one-shot it. Allow me to explain. I'm the Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. This video is sponsored by Aleka Frame, a powerful companion app for Warframe on PC. It helps you easily manage your inventory, improves the relic reward screen, tracks missing gear and components, and helps you set up sales for your spare loot through Warframe Market. Download Aleka Frame for free with the link in the video description. So when it comes to the Archon fight, which at the time of this video we just have Boreal to play with, they utilise a few different factors to limit our damage against them. The first is the basic defence every boss has, good old armour. In this case, it's alloy armour, which will be important later. However, unlike most units with armour, we cannot reduce it during the mission. Corrosive procs have no effect on the armour value, and armour removal abilities simply don't work on Boreal. We just have to accept that it's there. More defence comes from the abilities Boreal can use to prevent damage until we solve them, like the repulsion field or summoning aerialists. However, if we do things right, these will be of no consequence, so let's ignore those for now. Their final line of defence, the hot topic of damage to Archons, is damage attenuation. Damage attenuation means that the more damage you deal, the higher the boss resistance, giving you diminishing returns. This isn't a new feature, it's used by bosses like the Sisters of Harvest already. However, there's a little more going on than first seems and it's getting a lot of people very confused. You see, there's not one damage attenuation feature, instead there are two and they overlap. The first is directly related to your weapons damage, which acts as a way to reduce how effective higher tier weapons are. We can call this weapon attenuation. As your base damage, pure damage modifiers and elemental damage modifiers increase, the boss gets increased resistance to your damage. Unlike claims to the contrary, this doesn't mean that lower damage builds are any good though. Now strangely enough, this weapon attenuation doesn't affect many stats. Multi-shot, critical multipliers, headshot bonuses, fire rate mods, and even faction buffs all seem to have no negative applied to them by weapon attenuation. However, pure damage buffs like Serration and Void Strike, or elemental buffs like Charge Shell, all give a much lower damage boost than you have come to expect fighting normal enemies. Even viral procs give a significantly reduced damage boost. Now if after this attenuation you're still dealing a lot of the damage to the boss in a short amount of time, a second mechanic kicks in which we can call applied attenuation. You may have noticed that the first time you shoot the Archon, or when you resume shooting after a moment's downtime, the first bit of the damage seems to do a lot of work before suddenly slowing down to a crawl thereafter. The damage you're trying to do just gets sapped away. This same mechanic happens with the Sisters of Parvos too. What seems to be happening here is that the game measures how much damage the boss actually receives over a short period of time and ramps up the damage resistance to counter it if there's too much. This applied attenuation happens very rapidly and is constantly updating to handle how much you and your allies are actually hitting the boss. If you suddenly miss all of your shots or take a moment to revive a teammate, the downtime will remove the resistance, allowing your next shot to do a lot more damage. So unlike weapon attenuation, this applied attenuation is all about how much health the boss is losing. Your critical hits, multi-shot, all of that applies here. This is why the Archibex is so utterly underwhelming in Nemesis Final Confrontations. But there is a way around this. Applied attenuation needs something to adapt to. If you hit the boss with a single powerful hit before any applied attenuation has been triggered, you can bypass the grind and simply tear it to pieces. So the tools we need to pull this off then are a high base damage weapon, a weapon with good critical stats, a weapon which can consistently headshot, a weapon which is mainly modded for radiation damage for that bonus against the armour, a weapon with a lot of multi-shot, and a Warframe with appropriate bonuses. Warframe bonuses include giving us faction damage such as with Raw, critical damage such as Electric Shield, headshot damage such as from Prowl, or radiation damage such as from Smite and Fusion. We don't need all of these, but whichever ones you can pick up will help your weapon be stronger. Ivara is perhaps the single best solo pick for this then, if not one of the best picks in total. Her ability to go invisible indefinitely helps tremendously with the whole not dying thing you need to do for the Archon fight, as there's no self revive. Ivara's invisibility from Prowl also boosts damage to headshots, and she's got ability slots to spare to swap in raw for that faction damage. In fact, 
I've had incredible success with this build right here. But a Warframe alone is no good. If you take the Rubico with this, you'll eventually kill the Archon, but that's simply too slow for this video. We need something that can headshot far harder than a sniper rifle. After all, why take something with a base 187 damage and one multi-shot, when we can instead use a weapon with 28 multi-shot for a total 3,897.6 base damage? That weapon is the Kuva Heck. The incredible multi-shot of the Kuva Heck helps bypass one of the biggest barriers, the weapon attenuation. By splitting up the damage, this means less reduction per pellet. It's the secondary fire which is giving us the 28 base multi-shot, allowing for a lot more damage than if we had a single shot weapon doing the same amount. On top of this, the Kuva Heck, like most other things with a very high base damage, is using simple bullets, meaning we can fully utilise the newly buffed headshot bonuses. This again helps evade the damage attenuation. The sheer upfront damage total means the applied attenuation also won't have time to kick in. Modded like this with a Toxin Progenitor to get viral procs, we have ourselves an Archon Killer. You charge up the galvanized mods and Arcane by taking out a few random units on the way to the Archon, get all your buffs active, and then use Prowl's invisibility to get into a good position. Once you're ready, a simple well-placed headshot will one-shot the Archon. Now there are some things you need to watch out for with this approach. Firstly, from just an ease of use, the Archon has a tendency to look anywhere other than at you whilst you're invisible. So you may need to get a little bit creative with your positioning to nail that headshot. You also need to remember you are very squishy, which means if a sentient battalist starts going full laser disco, you absolutely cannot stand in the firing line. One tap from that whilst your shields are down and you are out of the fight. Also for this to all work, your buffs do need to be active to guarantee that one tap with a clean headshot. Any other hit on the Archon, including only using the normal fire rather than the alternate fire, will not only fail to kill the Archon, but will also trigger both its special attacks and its applied attenuation. If you do fail to kill it, reload quickly and try again for that headshot. Worst case scenario, you have to back off, rebuild stacks on nearby basic units, and then retry a kill shot later. Again, Avara's invisibility is incredible here. You can use other invisible Warframes too, but it will be harder to secure the one shot as you lose Prowl's headshot bonus. If you're running in a team who can use multiple buffs together, such as one person using Roar and another one using Smite Infusion, you should be able to confidently one shot Boreal. Now you don't just need to use invisible frames. Rather than subsuming Roar onto everything, we could just take Rhino himself out for a spin, buffed with Smite Infusion for additional radiation damage. Obviously, Rhino is far less squishy than Avara but he also lacks any kind of headshot damage boost. Even then, the unnerved power of Roar will be enough to get you that one shot. Now let's say you don't want to use the Kuva Heck every time, that's understandable. Another group of weapons carry a certain feature where it makes for another devastatingly good kill. The Incarnate Guns, Femmore, Latum and Felarks all have significant damage potential, especially when headshotting, thanks to their 2000% bonus damage feature. We don't get to enjoy the critical damage bypass for weapon attenuation, but it'll still be very effective. And what's curious about these weapons is that they also seem to get a much bigger benefit than they should from the ability Zata's Whisper. This could be a bug, but for now it serves as both ridiculously high damage amplification, as well as preventing the sentience from adapting to your damage. Again, charge your buffs and aim for the head for a very quick kill. The Felarx will be able to get the one-shot kill, but for the Femmore and Latum, you'll need to use a few headshots to get the quick kill on them. Now while all of these methods can get you that very quick kill, all of them have multiple ways to go wrong with multiple points of failure. If something does go wrong, that now leaves you with an Archon that's not dead, and now casting abilities. For Boreal, the main two abilities you'll need to be concerned with are his Repulsion Field and Aerialist Guardians. For the Repulsion Field, if you trigger it, I find it's best to bullet jump into the center and then switch to Operator to strike Boreal to turn off the field. As for the Aerialist, you can either use Majuro's Void Strike and the Clamora Prism Amp to melt the canisters off them in seconds. Alternatively, you can use a weapon to just shoot the canisters, for which I recommend using a wide body projectile weapon like the Fulmin or the Catch Moon. Once the canisters are gone, you can use a corrosive weapon to kill them in a standard fashion. Alternatively, if you're using the Felox, Latum and Fenmore with Zata's Whisper ability, you should be able to kill the Aerialists perfectly fine with those once the canisters are dead. 
Ultimately, the key to defeating Boreal quickly is to prevent them from ever getting to use these abilities, but if you do mess up your shot, at least you now have a counter for what comes next. And these are just some of the ways to do this mission. You can of course tackle Archons in other ways, which is why I've outlined the why as well as the how. Still, for the fastest and most reliable methods, these have served me well. We'll see soon if the other Archons require a different approach, but for the time being, grab shotguns, score headshots, and fight well, Tenno.